everyone welcome back to the cult of the dead dove podcast um i realized that i don't think i've ever said my name but i'm jay your host and welcome to episode two today um we are just gonna dive right in because i have four pages of notes and that's a lot to get through so as always a general warning for all audiences, uh, today we are talking about some really messed up stuff. Um, so big old trigger warning. We are talking about the Holocaust and uh, experiments on people and graphic violence. So you have been warned. <laughs> So let's just jump right into it. Today we're talking about, it's Josef Mengele is who we're talking about today. Um, there's a lot of German words that I'm going to butcher. So I'm just going to call him Joseph. Joseph Mengele was born on March 16th, 1911 and was the oldest of three sons um, born to Walburga and Karl. He was good in school and developed an interest in music, art, and skiing. Fun fact. This actually I thought was a little interesting because Hitler uh, also like wanted to go to art school and stuff. So very interesting how, I don't know, psychopaths start out. They're like, mm, I want to do art. Mm, nah, I want to kill people. So if you like art, barrel or stick on that path. Um, after high school, he went to study philosophy in Munich and ended up joining a paramilitary organization that I can't pronounce um, that was eventually absorbed by the Nazi Storm Detachment in 1934. In 1935, he earned a PhD in anthropology and later joined the Institute for Anthropology from the University of Munich in 1937. He worked with, oh boy, Dr. Otmar Freher von Verscher. Duh, I can't even, I don't even know. That's my best guess. He was a German geneticist who had a special interest in studying twins, and you're going to hear the term studying twins like 40 different times. Yosef focused on the genetic factors that led to cleft lip and palate and he ended up getting married in 1939 to Irene Schoenbein whom he met working as a medical resident and they had one son named uh, R- Rolf in 1944. I told you I would butcher the words, so you can't blame me if I warned you. So the beginning of his uh, super cool, fun life as a Nazi started in 1937, and I just wanted to do a little overview of Nazism and why it is bad. The ideology of Nazism brought together elements of anti-Semitism, racial hygiene, and eugenics, and combined them with a territorial expansionism with the goal of obtaining a more quote-unquote living space for the German people. Uh, So nothing good. (laughs) Literally everything bad. And then obviously World War II, Nazi Germany attempted to obtain new territory by attacking Poland and the Soviet Union intending to deport or kill the Jews and Slavs living there, who were considered by the Nazis to be inferior and, oh, inferior to the Aryan master race, which is really so much fun, right? No. No, it's not. It's not. (laughs) So not only, also, um, just one more thing, they also, not only did they have Jewish people um, in concentration camps, they also had people from Poland, um, 
Gypsies, Soviet, Prisoners of War, Jehovah Witnesses, essentially anyone that didn't fit their cardboard cutout of what the Aryan race was. And uh, also they threw, you know, the gays in there because why not? Which a lot of people forget. So let's just take a moment to remember the fact that that's where the pink triangle comes from. That's what they had to wear. Fun times. It is super cool knowing that I would have gone to a concentration camp. Because if you didn't know, uh, yeah, I'm gay. Joseph joined the Nazi party officially in 1937. He received basic training and was called to service in June of 1940 after the outbreak of World War II. Blah, blah, blah. He does general war stuff and moves around a lot. Um, But the thing we're talking about is in 1943 when he was encouraged to apply to transfer to the concentration camp service. He was accepted and positioned to Auschwitz and was appointed to the position of chief physician at a subcamp in Auschwitz called, okay, I would say it is Birkenau. I know that's not how you say it, but I also uh, don't speak German. So, um, at the beginning of his work there, he would supervise the activities of inmate doctors who had been forced to work in the camp, Uh, He made weekly visits to any prisoners that were essentially in, like, the the medical wing. And if they had not recovered after two weeks of bed rest, they were sent to the gas chambers. This is where it gets really... Well, this is where it starts to get bad, and then it gets really bad. He started to experiment on inmates, and there it is, had a special interest in twins... I swear, the Germans and twins, they had a weird thing about it. I don't know what is up with them. He also enjoyed selecting who had to go to the labor camps versus the gas chambers. Here's a quote from Wikipedia. He undertook the task with a flamboyant air, often smiling or whistling a tune, even though most of the other officers did not enjoy it. Psychopath. Am I right? Yes. Okay, he also supervised the administration of Zyklon B, which was a cyanide-based pesticide used for mass killings in the gas chambers. Um, he studied an outbreak of Noma, which is a bacterial disease of the mouth and face, that struck the camp in 1943. Um, he tried to figure out the cause and a treatment, but he didn't because he's not technically a doctor. I mean, I guess he is because he has a PhD, but not really. Um, so he didn't find a cure and ended up liquidating the camp where that happened. And everyone was killed in 1944. And then another that happened when a typhus epidemic broke out in the women's camp. He sent 600 Jewish women to their death via gas chamber. And for these acts, he was awarded the War Merit Cross and was promoted in 1944 to first physician at the Birkenau subcamp. I hate Nazis. I eat Nazis for breakfast, for fun. But if you can't confidently say that you hate Nazis, you need to look in the mirror and go, I wonder why. All right, here's where it gets really, really, really bad. So just just brace yourself. He started research into hereditary and used inmates for human experimentation. His procedures showed no consideration for the health, safety, physical, or emotional suffering of his victims. Haha, <laughs> wow, big surprise. He was fascinated by twins. People with um, two different colored eyes, dwarves, which I don't think is the right terminology anymore, but that is the only one I could find during my research, 
So if it's not, I apologize. Uh, and then also anyone with a physical abnorma- abnormality. Another quote from Wikipedia. In his 1986 book, Lifton describes Mengele, I don't know, as, okay, Yosef, as sadistic, lacking empathy, and extremely anti-Semitic, believing the Jews should be eliminated entirely as an inferior and dangerous race. His son later claimed that his father had shown no remorse for his wartime activities. So this man, um, is a, a demon. He can't, this this can't be a real person. I literally can't even imagine. If I accidentally hurt someone, even the smallest way, I, like, lose my mind. And I'm, like, crying. I'm, like, I'm so sorry. Um, so, yeah. So, there's that. He, he he's just a bastard, man. I, he's horrible. Um, so they started keeping twins and then would subject them to weekly examinations and measurements. And these were, like, mostly children. There were some that were older, but he mostly used children. And he would offer them sweets and tell them to call him Uncle, whatever his last name is, Mengele. I know that's not how you say it, but I can't speak German. So this man is just a sick twisted man. He's like, oh, hello, children. Here's some candy. And then here are some things he would do to these children. Amputate limbs without reason. Intentionally infect one twin with typhus or another disease. Transfuse the blood of one to another. For no reason other than quote-unquote science. What? Why? Why? No, stop. Obviously, Many of the victims died. If they survived, they were often killed and dissected. He personally killed 14 twins in one night by injecting their hearts with chloroform. Why? No reason. Because he's a freaking madman. His brain doesn't work. He's missing a big chunk, and that chunk is called being a good person. Here's some other fun things. I'm just going to go right down the list. Um, If one twin would die, he would kill the other one to compare their bodies post-mortem. He tried to change eye color of people by injecting the eyes of living subjects with chemicals. Why? No idea. For fun. Some people play tennis. Some people are evil. I don't even know. He would measure people with physical abnormalities and dwarves, um, extract their teeth, take their blood, and treat them with drugs and x-rays, uh, for no reason, literally for fun. Most of his victims were sent to the gas chamber after two weeks, and their skeletons sent to Berlin for analysis. Um, like, whenever he, like, dissects anything, or, like, takes anything from anybody, all this is, like, just getting sent to Berlin for further analysis. And I don't really know what further analysis means. They just look at, like, the dead body they get and like, oh, yeah, yep. Um, that's a, definitely a child that was murdered. Cool. Like, what do you... They didn't learn anything useful. He sought out pregnant women to harvest their organs without anesthesia. No, just, they're awake, they're alive. And he would just take their hearts and their stomachs and their kidneys. Again, why? There was actually a survivor, Yitzhak Gannon. I don't think that's how you say it, but that's how I would. He had his kidney removed and then was forced back to work without painkillers. Remo- he was awake and then this dude just took a kidney and was like, all right, back to work. And he survived. What a badass. I hope he, well, I think he might be dead now. But if he's still alive, power to him. Oh my god, this one made me want to throw up. If you're really sensitive, mm, skip ahead a little bit. He sewed two Romanian twins together, back to back, while they were awake. And then they just suffered 
and died of gangrene a few days later. Children! These were literal babies! And he just kind of glued them together because he's a madman who doesn't deserve anything ever. Here's some other fun things. These all come from um, two twins who survived. So this, are, this is what happened. He forced tubes into their lungs through their noses. Um, and then... Pardon. And then... Essentially, they just pumped gas so that they would cough so severely they had to be restrained to collect sputum from the lungs to examine, which is just saliva and mucus coughed up from the respiratory tract. They were forced, um, the twins were forced to pose for hours for photographs and like every which way for for no reason. There are so many of these photographs of just these twins. And it's like, what? For what? Because there's nothing else to do, I guess, when you're a Nazi and you're evil and you're bored. They would force, they would be forced to sit in hot water until they almost passed out and then had their hair plucked out and then like put back into the water. They were then shaved down and then re-photographed without hair. They received several two liter enemas while awake which caused pain and discomfort, obviously. And then they were strapped to a table to have their rectums hyper-descended to receive lower gastric intestinal exams. While awake, no pain meds, no nothing. They cried so loudly, obviously, that Yosef ordered them to be gagged. And then they took samples from their kidneys, prostate, testicles, and semen. Forcefully taken, without anesthetics, for no reason, just because they were twins, just because they look the same. I don't, I don't get it. I don't. Here's some other fun things that they would do. They would freeze victims to see how long it took for them to die. And then they tried to like bring them back to life. They would either put victims in a big icy bin of water or put them outside naked in sub-zero temps because it's Germany. They would insert an insulated probe into the rectum to measure body temp, which was held in place by an expandable metal ring. Don't know how that works? Don't want to know. They would place victims under sun lamps so their skin would burn. Um, they took one subject. He was gay. That, I don't know why it was in there, but it was. And then repeatedly cooled him to unconsciousness. So they froze him. And then they just... Then they would just put him under the lamps to heat him up. And then they just kept doing this until he died. What did they learn? Nothing. They learned absolutely nothing. They would take frozen victims and forcefully pour, pour blistering hot water into their stomach, bladder, and intestines. Uh, they died. Yeah. That didn't do anything except kill them. They put victims in water and then slowly increased the temperature until they died of shock. And one thing is they would take a guy and they'd freeze him, right? So he'd be almost dead to dead. And then they'd make a woman just have sex with him to try to bring him back by warming him up via body temp. So after his fun times at Auschwitz. He was moved to the Gross Rosen camp in 1945 in January. He ended up being taken as a prisoner of war in June of 1945, but ended up on the run. There's a lot of yada yada in the middle. He just moves around a lot because he thought him getting captured would mean a death sentence. Uh, cha. What you deserve. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't want to die? Oh, you don't want to die after you murdered so many people? (sighs) I'm all worked up right now. I need to calm down. So he moved around a lot. He went to South America for a while. At one point, he was tried in Israel, but not convicted. And then in 1985, Israel was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And they announced a million-dollar reward to try to get 
him brought to justice, but he had already died by having a stroke while swimming and drowned in 1976. Meaning, he was never officially brought to justice, but hopefully is burning in hell. So that's the episode. I'm going to rant real quick about why I hate Nazis. Um, There we go. That was my TED Talk about why I hate Nazis. And when I was reading this, it reminded me of when we learned about it in school. And there was always that one annoying kid that was like, can I play devil's advocate? It's like, no. No, you can't. There is nothing good about anything. You can't say that Hitler was trying to do what's best. No, he wasn't. Okay? These are not good people. These are not good ideals. He wasn't trying to do anything. He was just mad he couldn't go to art school and had, I don't know, insecurities about his dumb mustache. I literally don't even know. It doesn't make sense. And it pisses me off that there are still, like, Nazis today. And if somehow you know someone or you're listening, stop. Knock it off. Pick up a book, okay? Get some help. Grow as a person. Have a little bit of empathy. And if you're like me, and you hate Nazis, which you better, you I hope so if you're listening to this podcast, um, join the movement of eating Nazis for breakfast. Anyways. ha. <laughs> <sighs> I'm, like, stressed out right now. I need to calm down. I hope all of you are doing well. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want to follow the podcast, we've got Instagram at the Cult of the Dead Dove. We've got Twitter at Dead Dove Podcast. Also, a Patreon is in the works. That's going to be very exciting. If you have a story you want me to do or you just want to say hi, you can always email us at cultofthedeaddovepodcast at gmail.com. Also, all the episodes are on YouTube. If you just search the Cult of the Dead Dove, it will come up, or the Cult of the Dead Dove podcast. Um, I... Soon we'll hopefully have an actual setup. I don't have the room right now, but I'm working on it. But I do have the audio up, and then I have pictures of whoever we're talking about. So if you'd prefer to watch it on there, go ahead and check that out. Next week, next Friday, we are going to be having a special guest on the show. It is, we recorded the episode already and it's a fun one so you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna hear it also I'm going to be introducing I think at the beginning of the month I'm gonna be starting a segment it's gonna be its own special episode where I it's gonna be called um down the rabbit hole where I just take a deep dive on the internet and find out what's happening The first one I already have in the works, um, and it was about human and animal hybrids, and it just goes crazy from there. So also, if you have a deep dive you want me to do, like on Reddit or something, let me know. Thank you again so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourself, please. Also, wear a mask. It goes over your nose, kids over your nose and mouth. That's how those work. And remember, don't eat the dead dove. See you guys next week. (laughs) 